Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. I am in the mountains of Puerto Rico. We just arrived. We are here doing some field research. I am a perpetual student. Love learning from nature, connecting people to water the way nature intended. We have a group of incredible contractors in town. We are going to be doing a small stack slate sphere all along the way, learning from nature, biomimicry concepts. This is going to be one incredible trip. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing an excursion here in Puerto Rico. Anytime I'm driving around, going up through mountains and things like that, I'm always looking at the geology. They had to cut a road up this hillside and they exposed this incredible rock face over here. Puerto Rico's got some really cool geology. It's actually at the point of two different tectonic plates that come together. That means there's gonna be volcanic activity, there's gonna be earthquakes and things like that. You have these big upheaval zones. So what this island was actually created initially was because of volcanic activity because these two tectonic plates are coming together. One of them is gonna dive down under the other one and you have friction. That's what actually creates these volcanic activities. It also, because of the high pressure and the strength of these massive things it actually crushes the rock and it melts it forms these volcanoes and I got to check this out because I'm always looking at these upheaval zones as well as the different types of rock that are found in and around this area I know it's a mixture of sedimentary as well as volcanic check out some of the stuff right next to each other the difference in the mineral contents the grain structures again this is definitely sedimentary stone so it's put down in different layers over many many years look at those lines coming down so when you look at that you're like how could that be sedimentary? Because when you think sedimentary, it's usually moving water that picks up fine sediments and, and compounds as it's eroding away rock and organic material and things like that. And it gets laid down and it should be very, very flat. But when you have tectonic areas, you have that upheaval. So then all of a sudden these flat plains get pushed up. It just blows your mind when you think about how long it takes to do that and the great force and pressures to actually bend rock over many, many years. Just unbelievable stuff. I'm a biomimicry guy. We're using nature's time-tested strategies of nature, which is kind of all over the board, honestly. So a lot of people might say you could never put down when you have striations in a rock. It always has to be perfectly level. Well, here it is definitely not the case. I like to deconstruct these different things. I like to look at them and see how I could replicate it in some of our designs. So here you have two distinctly different types of stone right next to each other. You have this really hard layer down below, and then look at this stuff. It's a super soft and it's actually just falling away and it's creating all this like it's like a shale I mean, just look at this under layers is completely different totally soft inside of there and this one above really really rock hard so it's really unique to see all these different things but we could learn around every single corner This is the really cool stuff where the water meets the land. You get all that vegetation, a little bit of growth, but we are in a tropical area, so you're gonna get vegetation all over the place, but just awesome. That water comes through, exposes the boulders and the bedrock down below, and it just washes all the stuff out of the higher elevations. So check this out. Again, just from a design perspective, things that we do, we call these our big frame rocks. They're just big, massive rocks. Now we're gonna start transitioning down to smaller stuff. But I'm also pointing out some of the water velocities coming through here. So you have fast moving water, and over here we have these smaller little tributaries, these little rivulets dropping in place. This is actually becoming a sediment track. You're gonna see some of these fine, fine sediments. We are always designing these types of things into our features. But look at this, it just keeps dropping in elevation as we keep going down. This really, really cool stuff. And actually, I can see from right here, we got that big boulder here. Right over in the middle part, you're gonna see a big deposit of gravels and stuff like that. That process that's known as fluvial geomorphology. So fluvial means it's flowing water. Geomorphology is earth form. So that means it's an earth form, like a sandbar or gravel bed or something like that, that has been deposited by moving water. So here's an area a little bit higher up and off to the side. Again, when I talk about taking water out of a river system, the flow is down low enough right now. So this is not flowing, but you can see this exactly how we're gonna do a waterfall. 
we got these big rocks coming in maybe at different angles but i could just envision water coming through and what it does this is known as a plunge pool so you have fast moving water during the heavy rain season is going to blast over this and it's going to scour away at the bottom of this it actually can kind of undermine some of the other rocks which could cause some of these other rocks to move so a river system is highly dynamic it's always going to be moving you come back here after a heavy rain season it's not going to look like this a lot of the stuff's going to get scoured out and it's going to get moved and pushed further and further downstream but you can see just damp enough you got these ferns and stuff growing in here love getting ideas from nature rock right behind me it's not just a boulder it's a rock, a rock. hundreds and hundreds of tons massive water's not going to move it so fast moving water is coming down it's actually splitting during the heavy rain period not going to move that chunk in fact look at that actually has a tree growing out of the center of it so this is creating a small island and what's gonna happen is that fast moving water is gonna carve away and it's gonna erode further and further on either side. On the downstream section, you're gonna get further and further deposits of stuff right here. Always learning, love exploring, let's keep walking. When I was a little boy, nine, 10, 11 years old, I remember going to my cousin's cabin, Northern Peninsula of Michigan, and we would take water out with five gallon buckets out of the local river. We would bring it upstream. We would actually embed rocks into the sand and the clay and stuff like that. We would pour water on top. We'd make little boats and we'd watch them kind of bounce their way around, exposing all that stuff. So this stuff is hardwired inside of me as I know it is hardwired in all of us. We love to go by water. So as a human race, as a human species, every major river system has a large city on it. And that's because people flock to the water's edge because going back historically, we needed water. We also needed the food that was found in that water by the source of fish. And it is part of the very fabric of the human being. massive boulders so here's that big island rock over here just giant hundreds and hundreds of tons and then it starts scaling down to smaller ones these rocks look at that thing that actually was pushed downstream and it got wedged in between these two so it was wedged but it's just giant massive boulders over on this side that fast moving water coming in between that rock as well that is wedged in place it's not even touching the bottom of the river here so that rock was tumbled down the stream and just got stuck right in between there and then smaller rocks get put in around it it's the same type of water feature construction that we do Check this out, massive monster boulder. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Now this is bedrock here, so this is not a loose boulder. This is actual bedrock. It kind of keeps going up that way, but it just fractured itself and you had that fast moving water coming through and it just carves its way through some of those softer layers in between, exposing all of that, but like just unreal. I am having a blast out here and I could stay out here for days, honestly. Just the land of giants, like these boulders. 20 feet tall, easily. Incredible day in Puerto Rico, I love it. We just came from that incredible river. And while I was there, I was thinking of kind of an experiment. You know me, I love science. I love trying to understand how things work, how they operate. There's something called plate tectonics. If you're not familiar with that, you definitely have to do a little research on your own, but I'm gonna show you an actual demonstration, in my opinion, of what plate tectonics is. I have a couple large slabs of rock. These are gonna represent the North American plate, which is this guy over here. And then we have that small Caribbean one, which is part of Puerto Rico right along that that front line that's where you're gonna have Cuba that's where you're gonna have Dominican Republic and Haiti Puerto Rico you're gonna have these mountainous little islands that pop up because of this plate tectonic action so we want to recreate that so I'm gonna take a couple of these slabs of rock put them in place then I'm gonna take my little dingo over here and I'm gonna smash these things, two things together and we're actually gonna see what happens so what we're doing right now grabbing a mixture of different types of rocks the big bedrock that main tectonic plate is that underlying bedrock on top of it you're usually going to find all types of sedimentary layers cobblestones you're going to have gravels and stuff 
that could have been deposited through heavy rain events, glacial action, different things. And again, these are happening all over the world, but it's usually a mixture of that base rock and then you're gonna get sedimentary layers, limestone, a shale. It's a very fine grain material and over time it becomes compressed. Through that metamorphic process, it squeezes all the water out and it fuses everything together over many, many years under high pressure as well as heat. When you have that subduction zone, the rock sliding against the other one, the amount of forces behind that is just unfathomable. It crushes up the rock under such high intensity and pressure that it melts it. This actually causes the magma that actually creates all the volcanoes around our planet. I would love to do that test sometime, but that might have to wait for a different day because it sounds really, really cool to vaporize rocks. Well, the final layer on top of everything is gonna be the organic matter. All the stuff that has broken down over time. But imagine these two plates are massive pieces and we have just this flat area of land, this plateau right here. Now, once these tectonic plates go into action, the North American plate is not gonna move because it's pushed up against this massive thing over here. This other one down below is actually touching the South American plate and some of these other things. So they're constantly slipping and sliding along each other, diving under or over another one, which is creating all of that incredible geology that we actually get to see and we could dissect it when we start looking at these hillsides. I'm gonna Hop in the machine, put a little pressure on this. Let's see what happens. Experiment right now, not going the way I anticipated, but that's also science. I've never done this before. I think all we need, a little bit more horsepower. The only problem is I don't operate that excavator inside. So I'm gonna have to find somebody from Team Aquascape, get that big excavator out here, smash these two things together. Then we'll actually see what happens. All right, we find the right guy for the job. Juan from Team Aquascape, he's gonna hop in the excavator. This thing's gonna have enough push to definitely smash those rocks together. So you have all this soil on the one side, everything else got heaved up. Now, if this was an actual plate of stone, the weight of that would not hold. That would actually snap off, <laughs> start to crack and crumble. And then you'd be left with these overhangs. But look at that, the angles of all this stuff. This is exactly what we saw up in the mountains. We had all those different layers coming in and it's because we're cramming these two things together. All right, well, let's pull it back out. Now, I'm actually going to go get a bucket of water and I'm gonna act like I'm precipitation. Hurricane season coming in, <laughs> we have heavy rains, moisture rich environment, and it just starts washing. Look at that. All these little cool little roofs. I remember doing this as a kid along river banks when I was like six, seven years old at my cousin's cabin. Bucket fulls of water, we used to make our own little waterfalls. But look at this, it's washing all of that gravel down. It's exposing these big giant boulders that are underneath. And look at what it's doing. It's actually carving out its own little riverbed. It just starts washing that material down, eroding that stuff. But look at what's happening down at the bottom. Those are the alluvial plains where all that material gets deposited, makes that really rich planting areas and farmland around the rivers. It's just an awesome, awesome process. And it actually starts to undermine some of these boulders and it's gonna start to move things. But I mean, just look at that. So cool. And if we keep washing it, it's just gonna start cutting under those. Remember what we saw in that river, these boulders hanging on top of others because it gets scoured out from underneath. It exposes the bedrock, which can't move, but all of this loose material gets pulled away. When you start adding in the plate tectonics, you start pushing that mountain high up into the atmosphere, and now the weather pattern changes, and you start getting more and more rain. Then you start to get these forests growing, and you start getting more defined stream beds. This is the basis of ecology. This is the basis of life on planet Earth. So it's an incredible process just to watch this stuff, as well as recreate it on a miniature scale.
Puerto Rico, beautiful, spectacular island. We were up in the mountains and now we are on the coast. We cannot come to Puerto Rico without checking out some of the beautiful beaches. But more importantly, this is super, super important. It's very, very simple. I was talking about it up in the mountains. We are hardwired to be by water. All the coastlines, all the cities, rivers, the large lakes, people are flocking to the coast. The biggest destination place for people to go to get away, to relax, to go on a vacation is gonna be water-based. We wanna come to the edge of the water and it's because there's a unique biochemical reaction that actually occurs within us when we get near water. Contents of seawater, is the exact same contents that we have in our blood. Same minerals, the same compounds, actually in a very similar ratio to each other. So like I was talking about before, that biochemical reaction that comes across us, it creates a very relaxing feeling. Not only that, but there's also negative ions released. Right now, not a lot. So what happens around waterfalls, when you have large waves crashing on the beaches, it breaks apart the water molecules as well as the air and it releases what's called negative ions into the atmosphere. When we breathe those in, that actually creates that calming, soothing effect. When you talk to people at a beach, when you talk to people about being near water, they just have this, this feeling where it becomes very relaxing to them. I know I could talk about this from experience because even thinking about it, when I knew I was coming here, I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to sit by the pool, to sit by the water, to go up by the rivers, to sit on the edge of the ocean, because there's that natural airflow. It's that calming feeling that we all crave, especially in today's hectic world.